and I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger. And Tara Tasadar comrades call me bad. In the year 2002, the film 28 days later was released. It was a financial success, it received good reviews from critics and viewers, but all this you can learn from my previous review. At the end of 28 days later, James, Selina and Hannah gave us a hint that this is not the end. Or is it? And in the year 2007, the sequel came out. Did the creators of the sequel achieve the same success as the first film? Or even more? <laughs> For some reason, they decided to change the director, screenwriter, characters who survived the first film, and, most importantly, the atmosphere. Because, despite all the horrors and madness that happened there, the first film was beautiful dramatic, unusual, and interesting. What cannot be said about the sequel? Did I say that the first film has a great cast? True. But just look at this. Can you remember another horror movie with so many such cool actors? I can only remember The Faculty with Elijah Wood, Josh Hartnett, Jordana Brewster, Fuck Me Jensen, and the others. Jeez, I still have goosebumps from the look of Robert Patrick. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the movie. At about the same time that Jim woke up from a coma, some people are having dinner. Not these people. Meet Don. Don is an asshole. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Why is he an asshole? You'll find out very soon. While they were having dinner, some boy knocks on the door. FBI, open up! Don doesn't want to let him in. Fortunately, his wife Alice is not such a coward as he is. The boy tells that he was chased by the infected. And speaking of the devil, infected break into the house. Asshole Don leaves his wife to die. Well, technically, she won't die, she'll become infected, which is even worse than death. At the cost of the life of another man dear to him, Don managed to get away. Five weeks after the outbreak, the infected have died of starvation. NATO forces take control of Britain. People are coming back to London. Among the new arrivals are Don and Alice's children, Tammy and Andy, who were out of the country during the outbreak. Why did they move people to a place that hasn't yet been sanitized? Maybe they should have waited a bit. We don't fully understand the virus yet. We understand that it did not manage to go across species. Yes. Didn't manage to go across species, you say? What about the chimps that infected the activists? Are you trying to say that we evolved from primates and this means that we and chimpanzees are almost the same species because we share a common ancestor from which both evolved? So technically the virus didn't manage to go across species? Wait. But that would mean that you don't believe that God brought the universe into being in a series of creative acts over six days, six thousand years ago? Ah, you filthy heretic! <laughs> Asshole Don takes the children to their new home. Along the way, he brags that he is in charge here. No, I run the place. Yep. Then he tells his children how their mother died. He says that he tried to save her, but she was already dead. Uh-huh. The night goes by quietly. Civilians go about their business, and soldiers spy on them. Why are soldiers in these films almost always perverts? There were rapists in the first film, and here are voyeurs. In the morning, Tammy and Andy run away from home to go to their old house to find a photo of their mother. Because Andy cannot remember her face. Instead of a photo, they find the mother herself who, contrary to the story of Don, has survived. Then they are found by soldiers, who cannot spy on civilians in the daytime and decided to go about their duties. Alice is taken to the laboratory. A doctor who examines a possibly infected woman has taken all precautions. She is wearing a medical mask, because, as we know, this high-tech device makes you immune to all known diseases and viruses. 
and full body protective medical suit is useless. <laughs> Real doctors and virologists are so silly. It turns out that Alice is both a possible cure for the virus and its carrier. This means that she's very important. Tammy and Andy want to know the truth, but Sneaky Don lies to them again. Don realized that he fucked up not enough and comes to his wife at the military base where no one gives a shit about their most valuable research subject. Don finally admits that he's a coward, kisses his wife, becomes infected and kills her. Why is he attacking her? The infected don't attack other infected, do they? Look at this dude! <laughs> Wait till you see the... <laughs> no, 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 no! <laughs> <laughs> then Don begins to infect helpless soldiers, Idris Elba begins to regret that he started in this, and Don becomes the cause of the outbreak. Chaos begins. Soldiers receive orders to open fire. No exceptions. Kids saved, but Don, who hasn't forgotten how to use an access card, is chasing after them. Hawkeye realizes that Nick Fury wouldn't want him in the Avengers if he was killing civilians, and he wants to get out of the city. But there are two problems. The first problem is snipers. The second problem is the bombing. The air cab, they just got their orders. The firebomb in all of District 1. The sniper killed several people from their group, and they decide to do something like this. The living bait worked, and they managed to get out. They arrive to the evacuation point, and the helicopter is on its way. But infected are approaching, and then... Hey! They run away and find the car, but it won't start. Yeah, good luck with that. We hear that the starter motor is working, which means that the battery is charged. But the car won't start because of some kind of malfunction. In this case, it's not possible to start the car with a push. Never mind. Doyle's dead, but Scarlet managed to take them away. Scarlet leads Tammy and Andy through a dark subway station. She looks through the night vision sight and doesn't want to turn on the flashlight that her rifle has. Asshole Don won't leave them alone. He got out of burning London, made his way through the soldiers with flamethrowers, and found them underground. This guy is damn purposeful. Don attacks Scarlet and seems to be killing her with the camera. Then he bites Andy, and Tammy finally kills that bastard. Andy's fine. Looks like he's immune to the virus like his mother was. They are saved. And in the end, we see how the infected cross the English Channel, which no one thought to block, and they infect Paris, despite the fact that in the first film they already did it. The day before the TV and radio stopped broadcasting, there were reports of infection in Paris and New York. The end. I don't know, guys. This is not a bad movie, but it's much worse than the first film. Now it's just a tasteless action movie. No new ideas, too many characters, mediocre use of large number of cool actors. Ah, that's all for today. Press dislike if you didn't like the video, like if you did, comment and subscribe. And may the force be with you, comrades.